Welcome to episode eight of Nerdstock Talk. We record this live, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Saturday night. And everyone, I, every, every single Saturday night so far, <laughs> past eight weeks. So uh, that, uh, that's a guarantee. <laughs> Uh, so thank you for joining us. And if you if you listen to this, uh, you know later as a podcast or as a YouTube video, uh, come on in, check us out, or as a romantic movie with your wife. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, so what we're gonna do? So I have with us here. We have our our, uh, our our resident expert. Well, there's only two of us, and you know more about this than I do. Uh, I don't know if I'd call me an expert. <laughs> <laughs> J.P. Wildman. So let's get the names up there. There we go. J.P. Bought the Dip Wildman. All right. Good. So we're going to jump right in. We're going to talk about uh, – we got lots of stuff to talk about, and we only have 30 minutes. So we're just going to jump right in and talk about our last week picks. All right, so JP, you your pick last week, um, uh, we didn't we didn't see anything from. So, and for your long pick, your canoe actually has a less of a loss than it did last week. Last week was at twenty four percent loss, and now it's at only eleven percent. Talk to us a bit. What's going on with that I canoe? I don't know if I agree with your numbers there, Barney. Hey, I just I just pull it up from Rob. I just I just look at what it what it said from the week before. Well, uh, from the month before. The month before. Oh, the month before. Yeah, I'm looking at from the pe- the past month. It's only gone down 11. percent Yeah, the past week it's up 32.7. Mm. It's it's it did well last week. There was some news that came out from Canoe that they um are taking orders from their truck they have an actual prototype truck unlike all of the other speculative electric vehicle companies um Wardstown motors there's been some news on that they uh are taking orders for something that doesn't exist canoe actually has a, a prototype vehicle that actually exists and it's actually really cool um so canoes on its way up i, I wow. think the 50 dollar stock by the end of the summer Really, fifty dollars stock, and it's at what fifteen dollars now? Fifteen, fourteen ninety three. Okay, so uh, I and so uh, that's a good thing because you know what, and and I'll talk about it in our our few feature segment about um, things we do to try to not lose money, um, and I'll talk about that because I did try to do something some things with that uh, with canoe last week, and and you're you wanted to look at BlackRock Innovation and Growth Trust ETF, but that didn't. IPO didn't that didn't that launch. Not, that has not launched. No, no. Okay. I, I put a pre-order in, expecting to get some sort of a confirmation uh, on Monday morning, but the uh, you don't get that until it launches on March 26th, I believe. Okay. All right. So, all right. So maybe so we won't be, we won't see that again for this upcoming week yet either. Then. Right. Okay. All right. Um, and what I was looking at is uh, ten cent is still long. It's uh, it's for the past month it's gone down. Some interesting things happening in China with that stock. There's uh, some was it antitrust? Something I I didn't I didn't catch exactly what what the issue was. Um, some sort of antitrust or fraud sort of investigation, right? That, um, really sent it drilling. Yeah. You know what? And this is interesting because you know it's that, and also Alibaba. Some of these larger corporations that are that are coming out of China are getting hit pretty hard with some of this stuff. And I am I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that it just might be some growing pains happening with that. Just some politics that are happening. I hope it's not the same thing that happened with Luckin Coffee. For those that don't remember, um, about a year or so ago, Luckin Coffee or it was basically the Chinese version of Starbucks, which had an IPO, had a listing, a stock market listing, and it went up pretty high. And then it turned out all their numbers were not true. So it it tanked probably the quickest I've ever seen a stock go down. And then it disappeared off of the stock market the week after. So, yeah. Yeah. I did get in uh, instead of instead of BlackRock, I got onto Roblox. Yes, we can talk. Yes, that. Talk about nerd stock talk. You can't get any more nerd stock talky than Robo 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 blocks, right? Is that Roblox? Roblox. Roblox. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I don't know what it's going to do long term. I just kind of I'm just kind of riding the wave. I'm I'm anticipating that it's going to spike way up and settle back down to 
probably being oversold and and then right at fifty dollar mark i think is where it's probably appropriately valued and i think it was launched so this ipo so this is something for for any of your folks that are interested in checking some of this stuff out the uh every week almost every day there is something that is there's something that is that is launched uh basically every day yeah. and nine times out of ten it's super super volatile as soon as it goes it either shoots straight up or it shoots straight down yeah. and then as you say it kind of evens out for a little bit after it goes so um and that was one of them that shot straight up it started was it launched at 40 dollars a share and then it went up to 75 40, 45 and yeah i believe it was I, I got in at like 69 and that was as soon as the order printed. I mean, right. As soon as it, as soon as it opened, I believe it was at 11 AM. Yeah. Um, it was instantly the order book was up at the $70 mark. <laughs> and it's amazing. You know, and I would say too, is that this is a perfect example of what we keep talking about. So if you, the viewer or the listener, uh, personally plays Roblox or your kids play Roblox, you know about Roblox. So this is the perfect example we talk about is like, you know, you know it better than, you know it better than JP and I about what, how, what Roblox is. So that would have been a, that, that's a perfect example of if, you know, if you're, if you're connected to that, to that game enough to know that it was the IP was being launched, um, it, sh it shot up. So it was a, it was a good thing to yeah. hold on to or, or, you know, you know, by the eye on it, I might, I might let it go by the end of the week. I'm not sure. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And then, and I talked about before my pick was at Acadia healthcare and, and I'm going to still, I think I'm going to still hold on to that stock that, uh, for those of you, you know, you know, check out the ticker on that AC, ACHC, that is a slow moving growing stock. And I say, because of where we are, um, as we are optimistically, optimistically approaching the post pandemic world, mental health is going to be a huge, huge uh, thing on this. And this is the most accessible stock to buy that um, uh, that's on the stock market that, um, that relates to mental health. So I'm going to hold on to that, I think. So, um, yeah, so that's where, that's where we're at now. So that's what, that's what we're doing. Let's talk. So, what we want to do now is we want to we want to talk about our uh, what we've what what we do to pre to prevent ourselves. As as we say, this is the stock market is an in, it, the investment is you know you either have low risk you know your low risk low reward or your high risk high reward, and if you're looking at your high risk some of those volatile stocks. Um, there's something that there's a few things that you can do to um, hedge your losses as much as possible. Right. And what and what I'll do, I'll talk about what I do first, because uh, this is a, this is some pretty easy stuff where Mike's is way more interesting. So I'm going to talk to the stuff about for the folks who are kind of dabbling a bit into uh, using uh, using one of those investor apps, whether that be Webull or Robinhood, or or one of the one of the other trading platforms. So, what I discovered, that, and there's some pros and cons to it too. So, what I discovered is um, it's called the trailing stop loss. It's you, basically what it is. Is this is this is actually it's actually pretty fun. So what you can do is that when you get onto your program, when you get on your app and then you're able to put in the, uh, and, and, and so you don't have to live on your phone all day, or you don't have to live on that, that screen all day to watch the stocks go. And you, and say, say you buy a stock at $11 and you see that once you buy it at $11, it seems to keep going down, down to like 10, nine, eight. And you're like, well, is it going to go back up? I don't know. I don't know. So, but then you see it starts it starts to go up. So there's this thing, there's an option on here to sell the stock. That's called a trailing stop loss order. And what you can do is that you 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 gear up either all the shares or half your shares or a couple, however you want to do it. You can have it queued up on there um, on there to sell them at a certain percentage drop in that stock. So that is 
that's good to work with some for some stock that you might want to that you're not super you know not extremely married to right right away um you're not sure about uh so the benefit of putting in a trailing stop loss order on that is that you're able to uh not have to stare at your phone all the all the time and just wait and seeing what happens if it's going to drop or not uh so and so that's some of the points that it, it talks about in this article here that's on uh moneycrashers.com and these are the points that it talks about on here is the oh i'm in the wrong window here we go i'm, I'm scrolling up and you guys aren't seeing it uh so so what one of the, one of the advantages of, the, of it and it talks about it right here is that what i just said you don't have to watch your stocks to to worry about if it's going up or down or not um and it also doesn't cap any of your profits so it's always if you sell like if you put a stop order on it for you know and it's at eleven dollars you can put a stop you know a, a trail stop order on it uh for five percent below or whatever that is so that means if it gets down towards you know if it if it goes down to i would put it if it's that if it, it goes down to like 10 percent or whatever then you'll know, below ten dollars or so it'll automatically sell you don't have to worry about it um it, there's no cap on the profit so if it keeps going up if it goes up to twenty dollars a share then that five percent sell is going to be uh it's going to be a, a, a larger window for you so you might want to edge it up to maybe three percent depends on how much you're willing to want to lose uh, and and there's no cost at all on on putting on, on putting these stop loss orders um and as i say and the, the other benefit is is that you don't have to um you don't have to worry about that so i found that helping me out because th some of the stocks i had were kind of going up and down a lot and i was able to put and one of them was canoe which we talked about earlier um mike was chatting with me earlier this week said hey canoe man this is something to look at i'm like all right i'll buy a few shares i'll put a stop i'll put a stop loss on it so the disadvantage what it talks about is a couple things one if you're if <laughs> if the stock goes down too fast your algorithm isn't going to catch it in time so we could if it goes fast you're gonna then you're just gonna not think about it and watch it and then it'll so that's where it would it, the, the benefit would be to maybe put in a larger percentage of loss on there to help you out the other disadvantage which i found is that when you're talking about penny stocks and we talked about this last week my uh jp is like when that when when you're buying something that's so volatile like we said like one of your stock stocks had like a 50 percent loss or a 20 percent loss that is pretty normal if you have a five dollar stock in a day yeah. so yeah. but if you're looking at so the 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 challenge on that if you set a five percent loss on <laughs> that sell a stock at five percent loss mm -hmm. and it's only a five dollar stock uh you'll th your stocks will sell a 10 minutes after you log off. Your <laughs> <laughs> so I put it on things that I like some of my stocks, I have like Lowe's or uh, Microsoft. Some of the ones that I know that if it goes down 5%, that's a pretty hard sign that something it's going, that's something's going wrong. Something's going wrong. So that's the benefit. I would say the benefit of, of, the benefit of using these trailing stop losses on on your on your day trader apps or whatever you use is that uh it's it works really well for some of those slow moving some of those slow moving stocks uh it's really hard to keep tra if you want to if you want to use them for some of those volatile ones you or the, the those smaller ones then what you'd want to do is put them at a level that and the, the cool thing is on the app it'll show you five percent what five percent looks like in that money work money wise if you put it at ten percent it'll show you what it looks like money wise so that'll give you an opportunity cool. so this is different than a, a traditional stop loss in that you can actually set it set a sell order at a specific price yeah uh but, but it's not a price it's at a percentage this is at a percentage so that it'll show you the price that you set it at. You're capturing profits all the way up. Yeah, it'll show you the percentage that you're sell. You're putting. You're basically putting it at a sell sell price, at a percentage. But it'll show you what that percentage will be at the time you set it. Um, and and you know, the option that you can set it by 4 p.m. at the end of the day, at the end of the trading day, or you set it for three months out. 
Yeah. Um, it'll keep it there for three months out. And, and it, as I say, it doesn't matter if it goes up, you still have that, you still have that trailing stop loss set on there. You're, it'll still be there. Um, it'll lose, it, it'll, as even as it goes up, it'll, it'll stay on that trailing stop loss will stay on until you remove that from your, from your options you have on that stock. So needless to say, I, I, I chested it out. I, I set it up. I set it up. I set it up on my, a few of the stocks that I was okay about. I'm like, I'm not sure about this one, but we'll give it a try. Uh, you know, bought some shares in it, set it. And then like, I checked it at lunch. I'm like, wait, where did I get this money from? Oh, wait, one of my stocks sold. I'm like, Oh darn it. I didn't want to. So I was like, and then I, so it's, 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 it's interesting. It's a, it's a, I found that as it, it's a good quick, it's a, it's a good way for, for a beginner, for a beginning, beginning investor to say, uh, not sure about the stock. I heard about it. Maybe I read about it, but I don't know enough about it. So I'll give it a try and see what happens. And without taking a significant loss on it, without having to feel like you have to sit by your, you know, sit on your phone all day or by your computer all day. Um, right. But JP, you have something that for for more of the the, the folks who um, really the thing that so mine's more of the short term, just checking stuff out. Yours is a really good long term way, and it's called I believe you call that an EPI, correct? Well, it's it's one indicator. Okay. Uh, the RSI. The, oh, the RSI. Okay. Relative Strength Index. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay. All right. I got it on there. I'm just waiting for you to change your, th there you go. Here it is. So, so here's a chart. This is, this is uh, the Webull app, uh, the online, the, the computer app, not the phone app, obviously. Uh, this is Ford's chart. The, the chart symbol goes in up here and you can pull the chart up. What we've got is, is the candlestick indicators and the red line is the 30 day moving average. The blue line is the five day moving average. And you can adjust those as you need to by clicking this little, this little button there. Mm -hmm. um, and so along with that is, is, is some indicators that are kind of pulled up here and you can, you can pull these up and they'll show up underneath the chart. So the question is, 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 you know, I want to buy Ford stock. How do I know that right now is a good time to buy Ford stock? Uh, so what I do is I I take a look at three or four different different indicators on this chart. Um, each indicator is anywhere from sixty to ninety percent accurate. Um, so between the three, if they're all throwing a buy signal, um, you can be pretty confident that it's that it's a good time to buy the stock. Um, right now, for instance, ah, two out of three are saying buy. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's probably going to trade sideways for a little while. You can see with the, with the Ford stock, you see the RSI indicator is right here. Right. What this does is it, it sort of, it, it, it's a formula that, that develops a relationship between the volume and the price. Um, and so you see there's a 30% line and there's a 70% line. If so so yeah so you're saying that when you know when you when you pull this up this gives you an idea of when it goes down below 30 around that 30% that is a strong signal to say buy this stock now because buy this it's only going to go This is up. over this is oversold. Uh it, and and you can see any time this this vertical line here correlates with the RSI indicator. Anytime it goes below that 30% line, the price goes up. Uh, this this point right here, it wasn't a, a, a large gain, but it went up. Um, Touch the line again right here at the bottom, and it went up again. Uh, and and the same goes for for when it's oversold. The 70 70 line is is indicating that the stock is oversold. Hmm. So it jumped way up. And and it became oversold, and and it went down, and every single high point kind of correlates with this oversold line here, right. uh, and you can adjust the length of this to sort of smooth it out. Um, like if we did a five, a twenty. 
So what's that five and 20, what you're doing? What is that's that? The, that's the day's average. What it's doing is taking the moving averages to make this calculation, moving average and volume. Um, and there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of formulas that, that go on between those two, a bunch of relationships that, that gets this number and puts it on a graph. So as you can see, that the graph was, has become a little more pronounced by changing those averages to 5, 20, and 30. Um, okay, so what's the 5, what's the 20, and what's the 30? Those are days. five days? That's the 5 days, 20 days, and 30-day average price. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. So it, it's looking like, like it might trade sideways for a little while. It hasn't quite touched that line. Um, is this, what, what stock is this? This is Ford. Oh, this is Ford. Okay. All right. Um, so I, you know, you don't want to rely exclusively on this RSI. You want to work with with some other indicators. My favorites are the daily moving average, and the moving average convergence divergence. And this sort of shows you this the buy and sell cycles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every time it looks it looks like it might be it might be coming out and. That's actually kind of a bullish signal when you compare the the chart with with the MACD. Uh, it looked like it's gonna it, it might might jump again. So I see. So on the screen, there's four uh, there, there's four graphs here. Uh, you're looking at the second one down, basically. That's the one that has the. Uh, I'm looking at this one down here. Okay. All right. The MACD. All right. But the RSI is the one we had the seventy thirty. Is what your RSI is a seventy thirty. Right now, it's right now it's showing you. If you look over here at the numbers, it's at sixty two. Um, so that's that's getting oversold. However, with with the Mac MACD indicator turning upwards like that, um, that that is kind of a bullish signal. And you can also see here that the the ten day moving average is is uh, starting to cross. With the with the fifty day moving average, and that's also kind of a bullish signal. Every time those averages cross, hmm. the stock jumps up quite a bit. So, so I would almost say it's a, I would say it's a good time to buy Ford right now. It's interesting because it's like there's what I love about what I love about investing is that there's math involved, there's science, and there's also just gut like there's like there's so it's like it there's there's yeah, you know, yeah there you know there's like you know how how you feel about something and i think that's what makes that's i think that's what makes you know that like investing so exciting because it can it can tap into the passion side of people it also taps into the logic side of people as well so yeah that is that's that's cool so so good. So I so maybe what we can do too is just you know just to, to let people know. People always hear about bear markets, bull markets. Bull and bear basically kind of summarize the animals themselves. Yeah. Uh, is it time to hibernate or is it time to get out there and break down fences? <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't know. so. And um, and whether or not we are you know whether the trend line is going up or the trend line is going down that's that's sort of the definition of a bull market or a bear market if the trend lines are declining um these indicators are all used in a very different way right. um so that's that's something also to just keep in mind you know in a, in a bull market uh these are all these are all great tools to use for indicators but things change when things are in decline and and also too, we, we, when we always hear about it in the news, we hear about it's you know a bear market, bull market, kind of is is summarizing the entire stock market itself. But as you as as JP showed us here, stocks, individualized stocks, can be in a bull market and a bear market. Um, you yeah. know, especially the more volatile they are, that's that can happen several times a day. So. That's where you want to pull out, as you said, you pull out what the 30-day average looks like because then you can kind of have a, a much bigger picture. It's almost right. the same thing about seeing the forest for the trees. Like So it's you can see all the trees, the closer you get, the further back you are, it just looks like a forest. And that's where to give you more of a long-term view of, and this is the important thing, if you're looking at things that you know about and you trust and you think they're going to they're, they're gonna do well, 
um, and you have some money to play with because you want to end up buying a new car in the next few years, this is the opportunity to, you know, this is what you, this gives you that opportunity to do that. So, um, yeah, as we said, what, you know, you know, I think we should just reinforce it and say it every, every week, everybody watching this, you are an expert in something and take that expert or, or you're passionate about something, take that passion, find out how it's made, who makes it, how is it delivered? Because then that will give you an idea of which companies you know will probably still be around. And right. those are the companies that you want to you want to learn and invest in. So, yeah. Good. So let's get down to our our last our last segment. Next week. So what do you, what? So I pulled up here. This is what we're looking at. And so um, I'm looking at, and this is, well, it's because it's nerd stock talk. Got to talk about something that's nerdy. So Scholastic is having a quarterly earnings call um, on uh, this Thursday. And, and there's something about books. There's something about books this past year. Books are selling. Uh, you'd be surprised. A lot of people think talking about mobile games or video games or Netflix, but booksellers, whether it be uh, the genius brand that uh, the genius brand the books, but Scholastic has been doing really, really well, really, really well this year. So <laughs> I am looking at Scholastic because they do have an earnings call this week, and and I am I am I am curious to uh, to see how that will, I think they're going to come out and say, cause all their other quarterly earning calls show that they had, they, they've, they've done well uh, over these past year. So I'm looking at Scholastic this week and JP, I still kept BlackRock in there because I, I left it on there before the show. I didn't realize it was the 26th, but. Well, uh, yeah. What's going on with me next week is going to be a little complicated. Um, <laughs> I may or may not have been flagged as a pattern day trader. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not saying I agree with that determination, but uh, I, we'll see what happens after a conversation with customer service. Uh, <laughs> because I, what ended up happening was was the market was an hour or two from close, and I wanted to lock in. I had a bunch of of options expiring on Friday, and um, of course, you you buy to open, sell to close mm. uh, some of those options. So I, I sold those options to close them. Uh, and then what I was doing was reloading them. I wanted to be able to reload them by, by open. So I had, to, I had to get that capital out and then, and then reload them b- before the market closed. So I reloaded them at a, at a later date. So next Friday. So I, I closed out the calls I, I had sold and, and bought new ones later in the week. Well, that counts as a day trade uh, because it's on the same security, even though it's a later date. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that, but if that's the way it's supposed to be, I guess that's the way it is. And I am in uh, jail for <laughs> the next 90 days. So all I can do is sell. Oh, okay. Which means uh, I will be selling, probably selling puts on on Northern Dynasty Minerals. Okay. All for right. the next 90 days. <laughs> So, but is that, is that through all apps or just that one specific? Yeah, app that's, that that's an SEC rule. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, all yeah. right. So you don't okay. want to break that rule. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, so you're looking at, but, but then again, we said it last week, you don't, what are you looking at? It doesn't mean you have to be buying anything and things, but what else, what are, what are some of the stocks that you're curious about? You're looking at, you think there's going to have some movement. I, on? I really think that, um, that, Canoe Box and Canoe are going to be sailing. Um, Canoe keeps having more and more positive news. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lordstown Motors was just uh, outed by a by a short hedge fund uh, as as not having a deliverable product, and and a lot of the sales commitments they had turned out to be non-committal. Okay. Um, so so they are really tanking, going the way of of Nikola. Um, yeah, that it, fell. Oh yeah. man! And and Canoe actually is proving to have a deliverable product. They have deals with Hyundai and Kia, um, and and you know they actually have a source of revenue and are going to be turning a profit a little sooner than than they had anticipated, which wasn't until 2023, I believe. So right. um, it's a good long term. It's 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 your long term hold. The Canoe is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, and we always talk about buy the rumor, sell the hype. So, um, and you, and some of the articles you shared are, are like some are like are out of like trade publications. They're not like in giant newspapers yet. People aren't talking right, about right. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with Apple Car. If there's an Apple Car announcement, Canoe is one of the one of the rumored partners with Apple on that. Mm. Um, if 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 they happen to be the ones that are getting the contract, I mean. Canoe could be a two hundred and fifty to five hundred dollars share. Wow! Wow! Okay, and it's seventeen dollars. Well, fourteen dollars now. Fourteen dollars, yeah, yeah. And that, and like I said, I was try, I was buying a few shares of Canoe last week, but I only, I, I put on like a trailing stop where like five percent, and like when it's like fourteen, fifteen bucks, five percent. It's moving. It's, it's moving twenty five percent every like, hour. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, I, I think I had to rebuy canoe shares, I think like three times last week. <laughs> One day I'm like, darn it, I'd buy it again. Um, great. So thank you very much, everybody. This has been another episode of Nerd Stock Talk, and we will see you next Saturday.